What's happening guys, it's Brian Alzer with NeverState.com and against all my better judgment, you guys have broke me. I'm going to talk to you about how to get bigger traps. Now if you guys haven't noticed, I don't talk a whole lot about how to get bigger muscles or how to bodybuild because that is not my area of expertise and it's not really what motivates me. For me personally, I like performance, athleticism, those are my end goals and the aesthetics is a great byproduct. However, every single video I get two comments on every single one of them, number one, is that I look like John Cena, I'm aware. And the second most repeated comment is that I have big traps, again, I'm aware. But I actually don't really spend any time on working my calves, forearms, biceps, or traps. They just kind of grow through the big compound movements that I'm doing. But if you enjoy doing isolation movements, I think you should continue to do so. I want you to train however will make you happy. And trust me, my six year old self gets it. But I wasn't the sharpest tool at 16. So if you wanna do shrugs and bicep curls, I think you should do shrugs and bicep curls. There is no question that that will work. However, for me personally, my anecdotal experience, I find that there are more efficient ways to get the end desired result. Plus these exercises will make your other lifts go up I'm not sure that shrugs are really going to do a lot to help your lifts. So without further explanation, guys, here are my top five exercises for building your traps. All right, so the first exercise is the farmer's walk. I did an entire video that I'm gonna link above that you guys can check out if you need tips on how to perform the farmer's walk, but this is gonna have to be done a couple different ways. The first being very, very heavy for short distances. The only way your traps are gonna grow is if you stick a significant amount of stress on them and going extremely heavy for short distances will do that. However, you're probably gonna need the farmer's implements because your dumbbells at your gym are either gonna be too hard to hold onto because they're constantly rolling out of your hand. With a farmer's handle implement, the weight pulls straight down on your fingers so you can naturally hold more weight than you could with the dumbbell. And for you more advanced guys, most likely your dumbbells aren't gonna go heavy enough. The second way that you're gonna train farmer's walks is for moderate weight at moderate distances. So I like to go to the top every minute for like 10 or 12 minutes where I pick up a 70 to 80% of my one rep maximum and I will carry it 100 feet at the top every minute. Use the remainder of the minutes rest. That's definitely gonna light up your traps. And then the last way is super light where I'll throw like 135 pounds on and I will take it for a walk. And I am talking a walk, like 400, 800, 600 meters. And if you're not part of a gym that has strongman implements, I would highly encourage you to try to find a gym that does or buy some of your own because you can work this on your own at your house walking up and down the street. People do it all the time. But if you do not have farmer's handle implements, then I would encourage you to use dumbbells. If you don't have dumbbells, you can use kettlebells. If you don't have kettlebells, you can do plates, whether you're pinching a bumper plate and carrying it like that, or metal plates making a sandwich. I talked about this on my grip training video, but pinching like that. Now, these will all work because you're going to be in this engaged shrug position when you're walking. Maybe not at first, but as you start to lose those things, your whole body's gonna start guarding around. Your hands are gonna start curling in. Your shoulders are gonna shrug up. You're going to get a lot of stimulus on your traps. However, if you're only holding 10 pound plates, then you're probably not gonna get any thing really from the farmer's walks. They need to be heavy. My second exercise in order of importance is going to be the rack pull. So heavy deadlifts will absolutely build up your traps. However, rack pulls, most people can go heavier. So I would encourage you to pull somewhere from anywhere from mid shin all the way up to above your knee, just trying to lock out. But the important thing is when you stand up with the rack deadlift, you're not just standing up and putting it right back down. I want you to stand up, pull your shoulder blades back, retract your shoulder blades, you don't really need to shrug at the top. That's probably not gonna help as much as just slamming those shoulder blades back, holding for a split second, go back down, tap the rack, or if you're on blocks, tap the blocks, pull it back up. Do it for high reps. And I would also encourage you to do all types of variations of this lift. So if you do have farmer's handle implements, I would do farmer's handle deadlifts for high reps and heavy weights. If you have a car deadlift apparatus, this will build your traps like crazy. Just because of the backward motion, it destroys your traps. If you have blocks, I would do block pulls. If you have a rack, I would do rack pulls. The important thing here is to go heavier than you want to for higher reps than you want to. But rack pulls and their variations are my second favorite exercise for building your traps. Number three is going to be front loaded carry. So you can grab a sandbag, you can grab a Hoosfeld stone, you can grab an Atlas stone, you can grab a keg, anything where you are hugging something to you and bear bear hug position type of area, and you are walking extremely long distances at heavy weights. Now I know a lot of you are looking at this and saying these are a lot of strongman movements. Well, number one, have you ever seen a reputable strongman who didn't have a massively thick upper back? No, 
And that's because virtually every single strongman movement hits your upper back traps area. However, the front loaded carry is an awesome, awesome exercise. Number one, you can use it for conditioning, so you're getting something else done in the same amount of time that you'd be working on your traps, because you want to get more done in a short amount of time. If you don't have access to a keg, a sandbag, an Atlas stone, a Hoosfeld stone, or something like that, just grab something heavy, hug it to your chest, and carry it. Some people will use stacked 45 pound plates, like three or four 45 pound plates, and just walk with them hugged, crushed against their chest. Again, just like with the farmer's walk, at first you are not gonna feel this in your traps. You would not even think that it was gonna hit your traps. You also wouldn't think it's gonna hit your grip, but you are going to be a thousand percent wrong. It destroys your grip. So you pick up something heavy, you crush to your chest, and as you're walking, it's going to start slowly breaking down, and you are going to slowly start trying to guard that movement by shrugging your shoulders up. Now, if you think about a standard shrug that is maybe, if let's say you're shrugging 315 pounds for sets of eight, if you grab a 225 pound keg and you have it hugged to you like this, every single step that you take, the keg's gonna jolt. The keg wants to fight you and fall forward and you're trying to fight and hold the keg back. But what that does is every single step, you are doing a little mini shrug. It happens again and again. The, some of the sores that I've ever been have been with really heavy kegs, carrying them really far distances and back. So go find something heavy at your gym, pick it up and carry it. If you can't find something heavy at your gym, you probably need to find a better gym. But also do not rule out just finding a big heavy field stone, picking it up and walking through a park. If you're in the city, find a center block, find a big tire, find something of weight, hug it to your chest, walk longer than you want to, heavier than you want to, for a longer amount of time than you want to, and your traps will grow. All right, now exercise number four in order of importance is going to be the shrug. Now, I do not do shrugs. I did shrugs at one point in my life when I was probably between the ages of 15 and 17 years old, and it didn't really do anything for me. It wasn't until I actually started doing the rack pulls that I started seeing some upper back and trap development. But I know some of you like doing shrugs, so I would encourage you to do them heavy with long pauses at the top. Do not just go like this. That, that is not a shrug, that's something else. Also, do not roll your shoulders when you shrug. They go straight up, you pause, they go straight down. Straight up, pause, straight down. It's complicated, I know. But a couple decades ago when I actually was doing shrugs, some of my favorite variations were behind the back shrugs where I stuck a barbell behind my back, lift it up, paused, put it back down for high reps, probably in the eight to 12 range, as heavy as I possibly could. And this is actually the only thing in my entire lifting career that I've ever found a use for the Smith machine. That actually works pretty well. Other variations that I liked were the overhead shrug, where you're actually holding at lockout position with a barbell above your head, and you're shrugging from there. Trust me, those are a lot harder than they look. And then of course you have the standard shrugs up front, which I actually do not think are as useful as the behind the back ones, especially if you're adding rack pulls into your lift, but then you also have dumbbells. You can grab the farmer's handle implements and do shrugs with those. I think that would be a terrific option compared to the dumbbells. But again, if you don't have farmer's handles, then that's gonna be a problem. So shrugs very, very heavy for higher reps, like eight to 12 range with a pause at the top and you are not rolling your shoulders. They're just going straight up and straight down. That is exercise number four. All right guys, so exercise number five. Now remember, these are in order of importance. I honestly never do these. I really never ever do shrugs, but the first three in this order of list where it was the farmer's walks to the rack pulls to the front carries, I do those regularly. So I think those are the most important and will get you the most results the fastest. After that comes shrugs in order of importance and then from there we get into more isolation type of movements. One of the best isolation movements that I've found for my traps are these bench Y making things, again, with the technical terms. But basically you sit on an incline bench with dumbbells or even plates in your hands. Trust me, you are not gonna be able to do much weight on this. And then from there, you literally just raise your arms up into a Y, keeping your thumbs pointed straight up, pause at the top for a decent amount of time, and you will be fried. Your traps are going to get lit up. Now, I really like to superset these with face pulls, pulling a little higher, like almost to my forehead kind of area, and your traps, as a finisher, almost like tricep extensions. Tricep extensions are not gonna make you bench 500 pounds, but they're not gonna hurt. When it comes to shrugs, doing these things is not gonna make your traps incredibly huge, but they're kinda on the same level as the tricep extension. It's a much more isolated exercise, and you just throw it in as a finisher so that your traps can make sure that they are full of blood and you will be sore the next day. All right, guys, so there you go. Even though it is against everything I stand for, like I say, you guys did break me. Enough of you have asked how to build bigger traps 
So there you guys go. I hope these five exercises are useful to you. Trust me, they are a lot more efficient, especially the first three will get you to your end goal faster because you can move more weight in more of a shrugged position than you can if you're just isolating the movement. It's just my opinion and I'm not saying it's the only way, I'm just telling you what has worked for me. Hopefully it worked for you. But I do have a ton of exciting stuff coming up. I'm not sure if this video is gonna be released before the video where I announce all of that but there are some big things coming. So I am not gonna get into that here. I will save that for the next video, but I do really appreciate you guys watching. And I do really hope that this was helpful. I will see you guys later in the week, but until I do, go out, do something amazing, realize, keep working hard, be nice to each other, people, and I'll see you then. Build some traps.